Thanks, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> we are so excited to do today's Lunch and Learn. So first, I'm going to hand it off to Dana, our executive director and our founder, for um, a quick update from Autism Tree about all that we've been accomplishing during Autism Acceptance Month. Thank you, Rebecca. I um, am so excited to be with you today and have um, our speaker, Ted Frank here, who um, really always touches me whenever we get to communicate, including on our little pre-call, um, but we start before every Lunch and Learn. Uh, it's been incredible to celebrate Autism Tweet's 20-year anniversary. Um, we just did that last week, and we did it at the Valley High, and it was um, really a, a milestone moment for us that uh, we will cherish, honestly, forever. And Supervisor Tara Lawson, who's the vice chair, um, actually gave us this proclamation that's going to go in our office in, in La Jolla soon. And this is a proclamation that April 12th, 2023 is Autism Tree Day in San Diego County. Um, I just think it feels really, really good um, for so many reasons, but just because, you know, we love being part of the community and we're so, um, gosh, I don't even have a word that would even, even possibly convey how much we want all the hundreds of teens we have in our organization to be able to go to college or to get a job, um, just to, to really create the lives that they want. And so we all know that we're striving really hard to get there. And having San Diego County supervisors all vote, yes, on legislation to hire a more neurodiverse workforce, which the workforce is 20,000 employees. I just can't even begin to say um, how incredible this is and how important this is. And um, my son, Garrett Hawk, who is the reason we actually first started Autism Tree, um, had a, really put in a lot of time and effort on that legislation and said to me, mom, I never even thought this would happen for like another decade. And um, really it's very soul level for me why it happened it happened because supervisor tara lesson what drove her to do this is her daughter her little girl got diagnosed with autism so when i see supervisor tara lesson i just see another mom uh, like myself and my you know garrett's 23 now and i see her with her young daughter and i just feel like i always feel with a new parent just um, nothing but love nothing but um, respect you know, also because we all learn from each other and that learning just never stops. So uh, there's no way I can convey how incredible um, it is to be in San Diego with you all um, on this inc incredible milestone of our 20th year and seeing that we are only the only city in the United States of America to have this type of legislation. And that brings me to the last thing I want you to share is that Jordan Marks is a very loved um, person in our community. He uh, ran for office and now is the County of San Diego's tax uh, assess assessor. Jordan Marks gave Autism Tree this award and recognition for our 20th anniversary. And um, it's just a big honor. Jordan is such a stand-up person. He, every year he gets us to do things we would never do. One huge example is during the pandemic, he got us to do our first and only ever drive-through um winter wonderland at usd and that was all jordan marks pushing our team to make that happen and it was incredible we had hundreds of people come out and drive through during the pandemic our winter wonderland so i just kind of think it says everything about jordan and um you know with that i'm gonna just say um how truly um grateful i am every day but this april uh, Autism Acceptance Month during our 20th anniversary has by far been our, our absolutely most remarkable um, time in the life here um, in the Autism Tree community. I just feel so blessed to be here with you today. And again, look forward to you all meeting Ted Frank. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dana. And Hi, everybody. Um, lots of people I know, which is wonderful. And I see um, Anna, JM, great to meet you as well. Um, let me introduce you to James, who is the reason why I'm here today. James loves boats. 
He loves snuggling with his mom, who's also on this call here. He loves being at the beach, and this might have been one of the autism tree beach days. He doesn't love everything, but he was so good when he went to the dentist that when we went to Rubio's afterward, even they said that he was number one. And he's number one in my book as well. But today I also want to take you through some of the things that are not going to get us a number one at Rubio's because I want to be, you know, I want to tell you our whole story and I want to be completely transparent. Okay. And I also want to do it. I got to tell you, um, this is my bad. And it's because I still trying to get back in my groove after our two events last week. Uh, Rebecca did a very nice introduction for you. And then Lupe also is part of our introduction. So that was like a little teaser, oh, for okay. Jason, which I actually kind of actually liked, but this is all on apologies. <laughs> I should have said, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Rebecca. You're up next or Lupe's up next? <laughs> Lupe's up next, but I loved Ted's starting point. <laughs> you know, Ted, I'm usually like a lot more. I haven't been doing Lunch and Learns all year because I was working on the 20th anniversary and we even were talking about the order and I'm, it's, it's on me. I'm sorry. That's totally fine. <laughs> but I got really excited when I saw all the photos. But let us do our intro to you because okay, cool. Okay. okay, so I'll go ahead. We'll go over Zoom rules real quick for those of you who are new. Um, please mute yourself when you're not speaking. We recommend speaker view for presentation. Video sharing is optional, and you can type any questions and comments into the chat throughout the whole um, lunch and learn. Um, we will have time at the end for you to ask Ted any questions. And um, I'm going to hand it over to Lupe to do the quick autism tree update about our events this week. Yeah, so quick update about our events. We offer 19 programs, 13 are in person, we have three hybrid and three virtual. We have 10 upcoming events in April, but check all of, all of our social media, we always announce new things. Uh, here are the upcoming events for this week. We have a parent mentor night tomorrow. April 20th at 6.30 via Zoom. We have a boys beach day on Saturday, April 22nd at 10 a.m. at the Powerhouse Beach. We have our last adaptive dance for ages 11 through 18 on Saturday uh, at 12 p.m. at Tab Fever Studios. We have our virtual girls in STEM workshop that we're partnering with the University of San Diego STEM Outreach Club. That's happening uh, Saturday, April 22nd at noon as well via Zoom. We have our Project Sunshine Teleplay Workshop that's virtual happening via Zoom on Sunday, April 23rd at 11 a.m. And we have our second to last scheme, uh, USA Baseball Home Game for Families. That's happening on Sunday, April 23rd at 1 p.m. at the Fowler Field. Up to date, we have five, uh, 504 impact videos on our YouTube channel, so subscribe. And then we have currently 112 Lunch and Learns uploaded in our YouTube channel. So that's that. And then this one is gonna be recorded and uploaded by the end of the week. Yes, thank you, Lupe. And of course, um, the reason we're all here today, I think, um, it's Ted Frank, our autism tree father. And I just wanted to thank you, Ted, for making the time. Um, I feel like I have a very, um, I, I feel really reverent for our relationship. I feel we are one of the families that I feel the most connected to in autism, autism tree. Um, you and your son, James and Fania, all of you. Um, have been an amazing family ever since you walked into the autism tree office um in 20 is it 17 or 18 or what are those two? i'm old so i can't remember <laughs> pre-pandemic <laughs> and you were you know just visiting autism tree in san diego because you're moving from the bay area and um had no idea whether or not you were going to move here um but it just felt like the universe was bringing us together um, when it was so natural just sitting down with you in our autism tree office and talking about your son and getting involved in all of our programs. And um, I just want to thank you for um, really embodying our four core values, which is something that you created uh, for uh, in um, displayed for our 20th anniversary, something that our board board worked so hard on for the past year. And um, 
which is embrace, connect, empower, create. And just by you being you, you've done that ever since you walked into Autism Tree and have become a part of our family. And you just get our model of paying it forward. And really, I just want to thank you for um, all that you've done for Autism Tree and just being like a model example of, you know, why we do what we do every single day. And yeah, so that that's my welcome. Thank you, Ted, for coming to speak and sharing your story. <laughs> Thank you. That, I think that's the nicest welcome I've ever had by like leaps and bounds on a long shot. <laughs> You're so sweet. All, all of you are, are so are, are so sweet. And we, you know, I speak for Vanya right now, who's on mute, um, <laughs> that we absolutely love this organization and every, you know, it's, and I'm so glad to be, to not only be a part of it, but to know all of you and to get to spend time with you. And I know James, who doesn't speak much, but I know he feels the exact same way. Oh, well, I pass it over to you. Continue with your beautiful <laughs> presentation. <laughs> okay, thanks. So I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to kind of lay out my story in the way that a movie might and show you some different movie storytelling techniques along the way, because that's actually what I do for a living. But also, it's just I thought it might be fun to do it that way. First though, because I don't have a camera and a lot of movie making things, I'm gonna make you all stare at a black screen and kind of, so I can kind of take you through some of the situations that we deal with. So um, feel free to close your eyes if you want or look at the black screen, whichever you want. But imagine that I am sleeping nice and soundly having sweet, sweet dreams. And then and my body shoots up from the pillow. I rip the sheets off, I tear down the hallway, bump into a couple walls because it's so dark. I get the back door open, I, my dog is just furiously barking at the fence, and it is pouring rain. I run through the mud, grab his collar, and tell him to shut the hell up in the loudest whisper I can muster, and then I see what he's barking at. My son James is in the neighbor's yard, which right now is a construction zone full of nails, lumber scraps, cement blocks, and God knows what else. And he is buck naked, wiping mud all over himself in the pouring rain. James, I whisper scream, but he doesn't respond. He just continues to wipe mud all over himself. James, God damn it. I run inside, I grab my phone, I find my neighbor's number and begin to punch buttons. Then I see the time on the screen. It's 5.15 on Sunday morning. So I put down the phone, run to the side gate, and it's locked. I run to my own gate, get to back where my dog is barking, and I hop the fence. It is wet, cold, and I am not 15 anymore, but I get over it. And when I get to him, James is holding something up to eat. It's dog poop. I slap it out of his hand, grab him, and book it to the neighbor's yard, get him back inside and into the bathtub. When the water's warm, I put him in the shower and I push all the mud and I dog shit down his body. And when the tub is clean enough, I put the stopper in, I let it fill and he sits down. And then I take my first slow exhale of the day. I go to the kitchen and I hit the button on the coffee machine. And as I wait for the drip, 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 I stare at this bottle of pills at the back of the counter. It's Xanax that we got from the vet to calm our dog. I pick it up and I read the dosage. Four pills once a day. And I do the math. He's 50 pounds. I'm 150. What if I just take three? I remember my parents and all their friends back in the 70s eating Xanax like it was candy. So I put two, two pills in my mouth and I swallow. I grab a mug, pour a cup of really strong coffee, sit down, take a sip, and black out. That's actually a true story. Actually, it's kind of a, it's an amalgam of two stories, one in which I woke up at five o'clock in the morning to find that James was in the neighbor's yard, which was a construction site, and I had to figure out to get him out or not, and did get him out, and then this, the rest of it, which actually just occurred in our own backyard, but it was, I ended up taking doggy Xanax and passing out, and I woke up in the hospital and spent three days there because everybody thought I had a stroke and my wife, you know, I scared the hell out of my wife and it was definitely not my finest hour. But I wanted to illustrate that to you both because like 
we go through a lot of, of hardship in our family and we have a lot of those tough times and I'm sure you do as well. And I wanted to talk about those as well. And then I'll tell you the rest of the story, but I wanna, you know, like I said, do it in movie style storytelling, which is like a photograph, you know, you can have some blurry stuff, but unlike a photograph, you can change what's blurry and what's in focus. So you can see that like this doctor isn't just the nice guy that you think he is. Movies also give you close-ups, which plays books those don't do. Unlike a photograph though, you can move the camera so you can decide when everybody knows why they're in the mud. And those are some of the advantages the movies have in order to, to help them tell stories. There are some disadvantages though, of course, as well. Like you generally don't know what the characters are thinking or feeling. So because, it, you know, you could have a narration where, you know, a voiceover tells you what it is, but that kind of takes you out of the story. So what movies do is they have the actors and their performances really relay that to you. But then they also describe things in real visual language. For instance, when I described in my story how I punched numbers in a, or I was, saw my neighbor's um, number on the phone, was about to punch a number, then saw the time. What do you think, um, take yourselves off mute some, and anybody who can tell me what I might've been thinking at that point. So again, you, you see me look at my neighbor's phone, about to punch numbers, see the clock, don't punch numbers. Yeah. Might've been that I realized, oh my God, it's 515 and I shouldn't wake my neighbor up. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's what you can do in movies is you, there's always a way to visually show that, which is why you see a lot of people slamming doors and, and you know, reacting in big ways, but you can always find a visual way to get over it. Movies also have to edit because they don't have the, the budget or the time to, to film every single scene. So when you see someone go to work in a movie, you see them walk out their front door and then walk in the office door and you never see them sitting in traffic because they don't, yeah, it's sort of a film that they, another scene they'd have to film, but also because they realized that we don't really need everything. And they only give us what's really most important. And we kind of fill in the rest, which not only makes it more powerful because you have just the things that are really important, but it also allows us to take a little ownership and participation in the story. Now that actually happens with screenwriting as well, because in a movie, even if there are like 100 scenes, there are three key scenes that the screenwriters write first. The first is an inciting incident. And I'm going to use Star Wars as an example. Have you all seen Star Wars? Yeah. Sure, yeah. This is when Luke sees Leia in the hologram. Because before that, he's just a whiny ass farm boy and he is never going to get out of Tatooine. But he sees the princess in the hologram and he has to save her. And that's when the story really kicks into gear. The second is what we call the turning point. And that's when we finally see that the hero is ready to accept the theme of the story and move forward. And that gives us a huge emotional lift because we see the hero generally take a big risk. And that leads us up to the climax when things blow up. And one of the things that screenwriters do is they write these three key scenes first and that way they always know where their story is going. So it not only you know, helps them really you know, stay on track, but also makes it very quick to write a screenplay, which is why, remember that series, that Scream movie series? I think there were like three or four movies. It was written in one weekend because they knew where they were going. It was, it's pretty amazing. Now, these scenes also end up on what we call a dramatic arc and in often in what we call a three act structure. And this was something that was developed by Aristotle thousands of years ago, but it's still what is used 90% of the time. It's not memento, it's not Pulp Fiction or a lot of movies that play with time, but 95% of the movies have this exact structure that Aristotle put together. And even though it's so formulaic that these three points in film school, they can tell you where in the movie they're, they should happen. Like inciting incident usually happens between minutes 10 and 12. 
It doesn't matter how formulaic they are. We always fall for them because it really works with the way we are as humans. And particularly, it releases a cocktail of two amazing chemicals, cortisol, which is our stress hormone, our hormone, but really makes us focus and oxytocin, which is our love hormone, which really inspires us and makes us feel wonderful. So when two people are about to kiss and you don't know if they're, if they're going to, that tension you feel, that's cortisol. And then when they do that elation that you feel when they finally do, that's oxytocin. And all these things are a big part of the dramatic arc. Now there are actually two arcs. There's an outer and an inner arc. And the outer is what our hero really wants. So in Luke's case, he really wants to save the princess and the rebel alliance. The inner arc though, is what he needs. And that's to right his father's wrong and to become a true Jedi. And I know that's something that's gonna happen in a couple movies, but in this case, just using the force is enough for us. In Wizard of Oz, Dorothy wanted to get back home, but what she really needed was to appreciate home. And when she, you know, had that, you know, that lovey-dovey moment at the end where she's, where it, we all feel amazing and our oxytocin just plowing through us, that's because she appreciated home and we saw that she fulfilled her inner arc. Now in a love story, the outer arc is always to get the girl or boy, but that doesn't always happen, does it? No, sometimes they don't because it's more important that we, that they fulfill the inner arc, which is that they learn how to love. We like our heroes to win, but we really, we really, really want them to earn it. So in my case, and I didn't even try to have a good photo there, um, but one thing I realized is that you see our little heads are right by the, the pan that the, the, my, that the gold guy is trying to get. So we are like the gold that they are panning for. But my outer arc, is this is something that I decided back when I was in the hospital after my doggy Xanax gate is I wanted to make sure that James is okay. But my inner arc is really like Luke. I need to right my parents' wrongs because my parents made it very obvious to my sisters and I that we were a big pain in their ass. And I have a little of my parents in me. And it's really important that I break that and I don't ever make James feel like he's a pain in my ass. That's incredibly important to me. So how do we get up this arc? Well, there's a few ways movies have. One of them is this amazing thing that I actually think is even bigger than movies. I think it's based on a key ingredient that is in everything that we humans find interesting. Something, you know, lures us in, if something captivates us, if something entertains us, if something, you know, just fulfills us, that key ingredient, it's in there. Anybody guess what I'm talking about? I'll give you a hint, you're feeling it right now. Tension. Tension is hardwired, my friends, into our brains, our hearts, and definitely our guts. It's why we crave drama, love, sex, yoga, music, magic, games, sports. I mean, what's more tense than a field goal in overtime? How about a bomb ticking down? Now that is some tension. Oh, tension is why we love things that are complicated, ch challenging, risky, scary. It's why we compete. Wait till last second, drive like maniacs, and why we learn our lessons when we do. It's all tension. Things going up, coming down stretching and releasing. It is at the very heart of our human existence and that is what makes it so amazing in a story. Now, could y'all feel that? Okay, cool. I couldn't hear the music because of, of Zoom, but, um, but, I'm, so, but I, I'm glad you felt it. So how do we get some of that? Well, in movies, you know, you just felt the power of music due to that is a huge reason. Like for instance, try watching a horror movie or an action movie without music. It's unbelievably boring. 
Framing is another way they do it. And I don't mean the framing in an argument, but actually the framing with the camera sees, some of the camera angles and such. And there's a particular shot that's really used a lot in Hollywood. And every hero scene, every love scene, they ramp up the tension by moving the camera toward the actors. And they get bigger and bigger in frame. And as we, they do, we bond with them. And you can actually do the same thing when you speak, walk toward your audience, and you can increase that attention in the same big way. Pacing is another one. You've heard me get quicker and faster. As I said, it's why we wait, wait, wait till this last second, drive like maniacs. And then I release the tension, took a pause by taking a pause and saying, it's why we learn our lessons and we do. And then finally, or they do it also by the way that they structure scenes. For instance, in a PowerPoint doc or a newspaper, you'd have a big headline and then you'd have bullet points or a story substantiating it. And what movies do is instead of taking that kind of boring approach, they flip it. And whereas sharks kill two off Australia in a movie, first you'd see the details. And then you'd go up to another detail and you'd get even more engaged and then up to another. And then when they had you exactly where they wanted you, that's when they would bring in their headline. They never started the bite because they know that we would lose interest. So what they do is they flip the normal PowerPoint and newspaper convention and up the tension till they get you exactly where they want you. And then they hit you with a big infight. Well, that's incredibly powerful. There's also this interplay between conflict and resolution. And they often say that you take your hero and you put your hero up in a tree and you throw things at that hero. And you throw more and more conflicts at them and you make them resolve it. Because like I said, we want our heroes to earn what they get. And that becomes particularly important when we think about the hero in our story. Because in order for that hero to be heroic, we need them to face conflict and resolve it. And there's usually a character that does that for them. Anybody guess who that character might be? Well, in Harry Potter, it's this guy. Because without Voldemort, Harry Potter wouldn't be the wizard that he is. He'd probably just skate on his parents' reputation and rest on his laurels, and he'd probably end up as a bro on Wall Street. But because Voldemort is there to push him, Voldemort makes Harry dig deep, deep down to really become the hero that he is. Now, a lot of times you say that that person is a villain, but in actuality, like in a love story, especially between two people, there is no villain. So it's actually, they call in Hollywood, they call, they call this person the opponent. And in literature, they often call them an antagonist. But it's often in a love story, that's the love interest that pushes the person to like, like I said, learn how to love. So when I think about my story, who is my opponent? Who is my antagonist? It's this guy right here. He is going to push me to be that person that gets, that writes my parents' wrongs in the end and do a lesser extent my wife. But, you know, me and Mr. Uno, Mr. Uno are going to have to go battle mano a mano for me to get up that arc. So when I think about my arc and what we've done to get, you know, to kind of get up there, here's some of the things that have happened to us. So it's all about conflict and resolution. So I told you about Doggy's Annex Gate. That might be my opening scene in my movie because it really brings you in. And then the, after the three days in the hospital, we really decided that we were going to make James, or get James cured as much as we could. So we spent tons of money and we had lots of momentum and it was awesome until we found ourselves in a spot where we had to sell our house. But that conflict turned into us moving to San Diego and meeting all of you people. And it's why we joined Autism Tree. You know, and here it's, it brought us to Parent Mentor Night and it brought us to the Halloween party and USD baseball mentorships and the USD 
the basketball game and the winter wonderland and all these things that are really awesome about autism tree all happened because of the conflict of having to sell our house in Redwood City and moving to San, to San Diego. So it was a good thing. But then after COVID and everything, we had to battle it out with our school and actually, you know, have it a, a, hire a lawyer and everything. But in the end, we won a settlement. But then, of course, you kind of, you know, have to be careful what you wish for because that settlement turned into a ton of work and a ton of stress in our family. And it ended up, though, with us getting into a new school. And the new school that he's at, um, San Diego Cooperative Charter is fabulous, and they're all, they all treat him really well, and it's all very cool. At home, though, we're still dealing with a lot. You know, we had Doggy's Annex Gate before, now we call it Diaper Gate, because we have a lot of issues with diapers. We have diapers that get shredded, we get diapers that get soiled, we get that soiling placed all over, you know, smeared all over the place, and it drives us absolutely nuts. And for me, it puts me in this situation where I have a ton of anger, but because James can't help it because he's, he's got autism, I have nowhere to put it but back inside myself. So I find myself in this kind of cycle of, of anger, then guilt, then feeling horrible and hating myself. And I haven't figured out how to get out of that but I really tried. And one of the things that I did to kind of to resolve diaper gate was I went on a mushroom retreat recently and I took psilocybin and I took this thing called DMT, which is often called the toad. And it's supposed to help you rewire your brain so that you don't send the same messages over and over and over again, you know, about all the things that were, that were, you know, going through my mind with the anger and the guilt and not being able to cure him and what's he what's going to happen you know when he turns 22 and it's supposed to help you rewire him so that you can you know have some positivity and room for new thoughts it did for the weekend but then unlike the soldiers that i was on the weekend with who had passed trauma i was still in my trauma so it really is the same now and we're kind of in the exact same situation so when I think about my turning point, you know, this is usually when heroes, when we know that our hero is bought into the theme. I haven't quite gotten there yet. And I hope I can. But one of the things is I've learned that, you know, like Crystal put it really well in the video that, that we showed on Wednesday. You know, she said, you, you see past the autism to the child that you really have. And I have a lot of fear that really clouds my ability to you know enjoy an event or something like that because i'm always worried about what's going to happen what you know what do i have to look out for and then i come in clenched and i don't really see the kid who he really is and i i end up moving you know protective mode rather than moving forward and moving toward him and i really need to do that and i also kind of like Luke taking the big risk by using the force, I need to take a big risk and I need to make some kind of sacrifice and I need to feel good about it rather than feel cheated. And I haven't gotten there yet, but you know, I'm working on it because I of course want things to blow up in my life and, and get to that climax. And I was thinking like what a climax scene might be for me. And because James doesn't talk a lot, I think it would actually be just him talking in some way, you know, maybe explaining like why is he, why he's obsessed with bathrooms or explaining, you know, why he likes blue or even like, you know, saying like, dad, you're a total jackass. That would be as climactic to me as blowing up the Death Star. You know, and finally in a movie, you've got that satisfying ending when, you know, everybody gets medals except for the Wookiee because I guess they're racist. But, um, you know, I try to think, what would my satisfying ending be? And it, it, of course, will be the culmination of my inner arc. And maybe it'll be something where I say, you know what? I know I've been, I've, you know, been thinking about a, him going to a group home and figuring like that might be, 
you know, the end here and that I would might get be able to, you know, repair all the things that are broken in my house. But maybe, you know, it's one of those things where I say, you know what, you stay with us and you and bring your, you know, a couple of friends too, because I now have gotten past everything and I am welcoming you and I appreciate you for all you you are. And like I said, I'm not there yet, but that's definitely something that I'm working on. And that's my story. Wow, Ted, we've done over a hundred lunch and learns and this is hands down um, the one that will stay with me forever. Um, this took um, probably, you know, more courage than any man that I've ever met in my lifetime. And, you know, um, it's probably not appropriate for me to say this, but I'm saying this not as an executive director for Autism Tree. I'm saying this because I feel so much love for you as just a father and a man who um, had the courage to, to share this today is um, after 20 years, you know, working with thousands of families at Autism Tree, I, I really have a lot of, um, I don't, respect's not the word, just, um, I don't know. I just feel, I think it's, I can't find the word, but I really, am touched deeply when parents are talking about maybe I will put my um, loved, my child, my, you know, loved one in a group home. I'm more understanding of it, um, even though that's not what I've experienced um, with my son. I, I see with other families and I have enough love um, to try to perspective take. And I guess the overwhelming feeling I have after 20 years is that I want um, you and your wife to, to live and to enjoy life. It's going so fast. And I think that it's very complicated like everything in life is. It's not just like so easy to find um, a group home and I don't want to push that either but you brought it up and I want to say that took a lot of courage and that I just feel very deeply for you to be able to to share that and I, I think it's important I think it's so important I mean um the two people at autism tree that I learned the most from about group homes is the two people I like to be sandwiched in literally they're my book I have one here and one here, and that's Karen Wright and Sandy Anderson. Mm -hmm. And they they really have been like that for 20 years. And I, I don't know what I'll do when I don't have one of them because it's such a balancing force for me all um, on a daily basis. Both of them have, um, you know, Sandy's son Jared's in a group home and Karen's son Todd's in a group home. And um, I just think that we've never really brought that forward in 20 years. And so that's why I'm, I'm not finding a way to, to talk freely or, or find the words, but like, I'm, I'm saying that I will never forget you sharing this. Um, I'll carry it with me. And I feel that you, what I hope you take away from me is how deeply I want you to be okay with what you've shared. And also that yeah. it's, extraordinary and it's critically important years ago sandy anderson when she was trying to find a home for jared it took over two years because he is not verbally fluent and he's medically fragile and he was young and she also has her son joel who everyone knows who's our artist and has you know um i am very close to joel and i really i really don't know jared i've only met him a couple times but it took a couple of years. And then what happened is Sandy kind of started um, getting to know the other um, people in the group home. When we were shopping one day, she was picking up stuff for Jared's friends. But to say that any of this 
um, is easy or talked about, it's just not true. And you make me feel um, like it's a total blessing that you're that you are talking about it. And I think mm -hmm. it's critically important because there's definitely other families at Autism Tree that I'm thinking about every day this topic. And maybe the biggest reason to be completely real is because I don't want anything to happen um, to the families that are trying to do it all on their own, like you and your wife are. I don't want anything to happen to you or your wife. And I don't want anything to happen to one of the people, you know, I'm most concerned about is like a family member that doesn't quite know what she's going to do with her family. And I used to have a different viewpoint, but it's because so much time has gone on. And as you feel it, you've tried, you know, and what you just shared, you've tried so many things. And um, there's a ripple effect to that in your cellular being for you and your wife. And, you know, even, even myself, I feel that in my cells just from, um, from 20 years of being really, really, really daily in it and with my whole person, you know, and I never get immune to anything. But what I just want you to know is um, you are not, you know, you're not alone and you're the bravest person that I've ever met on a Lunch and Learn and even at Autism Tree. And that your gift is telling stories is truly remarkable because this is a story, Ted, that truly needs to be told. And, you know, think about it because we've been around 20 years. We have so many families whose children are now adults and mm -hmm. and um there is a lot a lot a lot going on with that and and the, what it is is what you've articulated they're trying to figure out how to not burn out because yeah we we only have so uh, one time a chinese the chinese um culture i someone told me believes everyone every human being has only one battery and it's everybody gets the same amount of energy it's how you use it and i thought gosh i've expended so much of my battery if if you stack me up against other people my age i know maybe some people have expended more energy but i know i've expended so much energy and i know you have too and mm -hmm. you know so um i just i'm really deeply touched ted i never imagined what you were going to talk about and i think that's one of the things that makes these lunch and learns so incredibly powerful and authentic and I just encourage you to keep um, working on your story that you're telling and know that um, we'll be honored forever to be part of your story that uh, this story that you're working on of your life and your decisions and and all of it and since I've met you I can't I even exaggerate how much I'm inspired by you the way you you do things is just um, truly unique and um, very powerful. Thank you. And, you know, like, that's one of the reasons why I was looking forward to this was that I felt like you were the kind of, you were the people I could be open and honest with. Yeah, and I, could, um, I don't tell anybody that I work with about any of these things. Um, you know, it's, and it's, you know, when you're, Talk, when you're talking at a cocktail party, it feels like, you know, you, you just kind of keep it light. But, but uh, you know, when we moved to, to San Diego, you know, one of the things that we also decided is we, we want to dive into this deep, into this community because they understand better than anybody. And it really, it feels really good to have that community right now that I in a pool deep enough that I can dive, you know, in this deep. And I actually talked to Sandy about a few years ago, like when I first moved here. And she was the one who kind of planted the whole group home idea with me because she told me about Jared. And she told me about how much happier he is being on his own and why, you know, he, he kind of like he got sick of them. And he was like, he really wanted some independence. And I think about, you know, James seems like he's sick of us all the time. And I totally understand why, because we're the people who tell them what to do constantly. And so, you know, I'm hoping it'll be that if that's what happens, it happened. It's something that's good for him as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, it is, it is so complicated. And, and we, we're, we're also just trying to, to figure out a succession plan so that when we pass on, we, he's going to be somewhere 
where he's going to have his, his people and everything. He's going to have his structure and we won't have to scramble, you know, like when we're kind of at, at when we're really old. Well, you know, there's a, there's definitely a few other families at Autism Tree that I'd love you just to meet and to know, and just, you know, our yeah. stories are powerful and, and they're all, you, you know, all, every, every, um, every one of the, the kids, you know, with an autism tree, adults or, or children, um, you know, of course, is there is, has unique needs and personalities and, and that all matters. The thing that, that I think I might've already said, but I'll say it again, that surprised me that I learned from Sandy. And that was, you know, so long ago, it, it I would imagine it's more now, but there, when she was looking with Jared, there was a thousand group homes in San Diego County. So it's pretty remarkable how much was out there even way back then. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of initiatives that I may be aware of, but I'm not knowledgeable. And I might just sort of peripherally aware yeah. of them, but there's so much going on in San Diego, um, you know, with so many things. But here at Autism Tree, um, we definitely have families that have been with us since day one that have a loved one in a group home. So it's not something that yeah. I'm not familiar with, but I don't consider myself really knowledgeable because um, I've only really been to um, um, the one that is in um, Hamul. And mm -hmm. Garrett, my son actually got me to go. He really likes the CEO there and I'm not sure if it's the same CEO. And I'm blanking on the name. I've, actually, I've been to two places, but one was just for where you can go for the daytime and this other yeah. one, you can live there. But I would like to say we definitely know um, resources. And okay. I think the biggest thing that we're focused on is making sure that you and your family enjoy every every week. You know, like right now, this week, we have 10 events that are open mm -hmm. to families. And I really want to encourage you. And that's what encouraged me so much is like seeing your family taking advantage of all these great relationships that we have. And, you know, I really hope that you guys keep doing that. And then um, that you, we keep being here for you as the resource that we've built for 20 years. I feel like you've spoken to Sandy, but it might've been a while. If you guys haven't mm -hmm. ever met with Karen Wright and her husband, it might be a really nice thing to do is to meet them. Um, they're wonderful. Also, um, Lisa Fisher um, and her husband are amazing. If I don't know if you've met her, she's doing a lot. Mm -hmm. I've known her since day one, and she. I, if you want, I might send you um, her lunch and learn that she did. Okay, yeah, that, I would love to meet these it's families. Very powerful, and she's talking about her son Blake. And her son Blake, she had to put in a in a a group home very, at a very, very young age and there weren't any in San Diego. So she went through having to have him be in LA and um, she's a person that sees her son every week even though he's in a group home. Um, so, so she's very dedicated and um, yeah, I just, I don't wanna over talk that part of it. I know this is a long, yeah. a long journey, but I felt like it was um, really, really brave and just something that is, is honestly critically important and I'm just I'm grateful that you brought it up well thanks and it, I would love to meet these families because for me seeing the being able to like see the future and or a possible future and not be afraid of it is immensely powerful and yeah. we we're thinking you know we we're thinking like when he reaches 22 or something like that or you know when he likes it when he feels like Jared he wants to get out of out from under our wing but um but yeah like just just being able to to hear people talk about it and like you said like like um sandy spending two years finding finding one finding you know hearing about that journey will be immensely helpful because then you know i won't be i won't be it won't be the unknown that i'm afraid of yeah yeah well lisa definitely i can't remember her lunch and learn by heart but it was also oh, honestly yeah. really really powerful and all i said to her because she was really having some i don't know just a kind of really asking rebecca and i like what should i talk about what should i talk about and i just said i just really want you to talk from your heart that's what makes the lunch and learns so powerful and she really took that on 
And so like her lunch and learn is her speaking from her heart about her son, Blake and her journey. Um, so I think if, if you and your wife watch it, I think that'd be really great. Um, and, and I think that she would, her and her husband would love going to dinner with you guys. They're really, they were at our 20, 20 year. I wish I could have introduced you. Um, but yeah, I've known them the whole 20 years. Yeah, uh, you know, it's crazy. I've known I love, I love Ken, to meet them. Um, and Karen the whole 20 years. So I think that's something that's really, really special is that even though um, they have loved ones in group homes, they're still love the foundation so much. And that we're mm -hmm. trying to have kids go to college and get jobs. And honestly, they're Sandy and, and Karen are like, I mean, like s sisters are the best family I could ask for for my son Garrett. They're so supportive of him. And um, I know that they mean so much to him as well. And I think that's just something that people might not understand is that like neurodiversity or the autism spectrum, it doesn't matter where the person falls on it. The community can come together mm -hmm. and be very understanding of each other while a, a person that doesn't has an experience that they might not understand. How can someone who's, you know, nonverbal be someone so close to someone who's verbal. And I told my son Garrett, like when Otto Lana told me that Garrett was a brother from another mother, that he feels like that about Garrett. I said, that just was the most best thing I could ever yeah. ask for in my life to have that kind of connection between Otto and Garrett. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think that's the foundation. I think that's, I think that's the biggest thing I see of the, the actual individuals we're serving is if you were to realize um, at the 20th anniversary, Ted, there were <laughs> more people um, on the autism spectrum that were there than I could actually count. There was at least 10 and they were having a great time and they wanted to be there. It wasn't because we were trying to get them to be there. Um, and it's because they're just so involved. And I think they feel you know, that they're the contributing and they're involved in things that are really important to them. Katrina had done, um, recently done a, like, um, cabaret show. What was it, Rebecca? A cabaret show, a one woman cabaret yeah. show. Mm -hmm. and yeah, we did, Matt, we got a chance to talk to her. And Matt Dunford works for Upper Deck and he hires incoming artists and he's very involved in our neuroscience conference. And I hooked him up with Dr. Levy. I knew they would love each other and now he's really collaborative with that jeff flies in from massachusetts and is just a huge advocate and took one of the, some of the best photos of the night he did a whole photo album for us oh cool yeah and then um one of the supervisors who's the actual office he's the chief of staff from one of the other supervisors in san diego county brought his son adam so it was the first time we met adam um, another one of our families who's hugely involved in the football program came, Nathan came with his football player mentor and his mom. Mm -hmm. um, it was just, yeah, you know, well. I, didn't, I didn't try to go introduce them all because everything we've ever done in 20 years, that's what happens is that an auto of course was there and Joel and um, they know that they can just come and they can just, if they want to tell me or Rebecca or Lupe, like I want to do something, that we will listen and we'll, they're mm -hmm. going to get to do it because why not because if they if they decide they want to do something we know it's going to be amazing <laughs> it always is yeah. so um i just but this lunch and learn that you did ted it i'm gonna say i would without any hesitation say this is our bet for me personally i would say this is my favorite lunch and learn because you you literally um it was like a paradigm shift do you ever see the movie Dead Poets Society? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I felt like I had this moment where you got me to stand on the desk and look at things from a different angle. Remember when he did that? Mm -hmm. He had to stand on the desk and look at things from a different angle. Like, I felt like this is the only lunch and learn where I 100% felt like I, did, I really did that. I'm glad you, I'm glad you liked it. It's your style. Thank you. Thank it's you. what you're good at. And it's one of those things where it helped me figure things out a little bit too, like um, like trying to figure out what my turning point and my climax might be. Was you know now it's like now, now I kind of you know like other, other people do vision boards, this is kind of like that. It's like okay, 
I could see this happening. Maybe, you know, maybe this is something to work if I can nudge toward. You know, I've learned you can't do it or you can't, you can't even will it, but you can, you know, at least, at least envision it. Yeah. I, and, I absolutely believe that. Rebecca, do you want to share anything with Ted? I'm just, I'm, I'm just blown away, Ted, by this whole, this whole presentation, the way you did everything. So creative. It's so out of the box and oh, so personal. And it was so brave for you to share that it with us. And I really thank you for that. I think it's something that a lot of parents, um, would like to hear and also like can relate to um, during their journey because you know a lot of parents are going through you know we've had what is it Lupe now I don't know 170 new intakes since January 1st this year so there's a lot of brand new families who are um, in the thick of it and um, or even some families who you know, have gone through the thick of it for <laughs> quite a while now. And I think the whole image of, you know, you even envisioning your, what your climax would be or your turning point, I think it's a, it's a nice practice um, for other parents to do too. And, um, and yeah, I just think it's, it's a beautiful concept that you shared with us. And I'm really grateful for it. Well, thank you. Yeah, Ted, I wanted to share um, something else that's been happening to me as um, the executive director of Autism Tree. I'm getting pulled many times to meet um, people that run some sort of group home. So mm -hmm. the last one that I went to um, is in Las Vegas. And if I can pick one person who I would like to be my resource and autism trees resource. Um, it's this man and he is um, like nobody I've ever met. He's dedicated 30 years. He is the executive director and runs, I don't know, like 20 group homes, but I met him at his ranch in, um, in Las Vegas. And I felt so good. I spent like three hours with him and all he did is tell me stories about all the different families. And I felt like he was a version wow. of me and the families were there and they're um, not the families, but you know, there was all different kinds of um, disabilities. It was not just um, autism. And I just saw each person that organically was there connecting with him, interacting with him, talking with him. Like he's so accessible to the people that live there. And I felt like it was a really nice um, facility and I wanted to share it with another family, not because I thought their loved one was going to live there, but mainly because I wanted them to just see there's things like that out there and that I would trust this person um, because he's literally lives and breathes it for 30 years. Um, that like if I was in that position to think about it or be looking at other things, I'd want to run it by him. Like, cause he can just see, he's so involved in it. It's such a, also just you know, how, how, how it works in terms of the funding and just, you know, mm -hmm. everything. But in the time I was there, I saw him buy everyone lunch. I saw them come and get some of the kids to take him off to um, go horseback riding. <laughs> I, I, and they had done a golf tournament the day before. Like, it was all so real. How do they make money? How do they interact? I just, like, I just couldn't believe it. And um, I also had a really deep moment where we talked about how, what was hard and what was hard for him is just he would be happy if he only had to work with the actual um people that live there but it, or his you know mm -hmm. um I forget what they they call them at that place but they everyone loves um Archie's his name and yeah. he just said what is the hardest thing for him is have all the other roles he has to have if he yeah. could just work with the actual families that he's serving but no, you know, it's the board, it's the fundraising, it's the, you know. But yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Real. But you know, I, I asked him to come on and actually do a lunch and learn, but I just want to plant mm -hmm. that seed with you. If you ever yeah. are in Las Vegas for any reason, I would absolutely have you meet him just because I think he gives a different, he just has a, a world of experience and perspective that I respect. Yeah, and like you said, if the fact that he knows everybody, like he he really knows and can tell stories about everybody, mm -hmm. means a lot. 
Yeah, I know. I couldn't stop listening to him. And I also was like, oh my gosh, I've never met someone that reminds me of myself where you're just like, I want to tell you about this person. And, you know, yeah. and yeah. Um, sure. But, you know, baby steps, right? You, But you, you mm -hmm. are the catalyst. And I see this, um, honestly, Ted, being something that we need to move forward together on, if you want, of just opening up this dialogue that you started. Yeah, absolutely. And like, yeah, I would love to meet all those parents and, and see, you know, that kind of world. And, you know, and like, and in the meantime, it's like, you, you know, bringing James to as many of the AT, of the autism tree activities as we can, you know, I, we, you know, I like, kind of like Otto and Garrett, we really want him to, we really want him to find a friend. And just giving them these opportunities, hopefully we'll, we'll make that happen at some point. Yeah. And just, and cause we enjoy it, you know, we enjoy the activities so much as well. Yeah. And I see that too, with like, since the pandemic, when we started the new basketball game recently, the bat with basketball, with the women's team mm -hmm. and the men's team, um, I went to one of each and I, I used to really be like having, introducing the parents to each other and just be there trying. And I, I don't find that I really needed to do that. Because the parents are so initiative, you know, after the pandemic and, and, and people yeah. are figuring out if their kids are the same age or they have the same interests or, you know, so um, I think it's, I think however long we've been doing bringing parents together out in the community, I see it being so much more paying it forward where the parents are pushing forward like you are. Um, but yeah, that's an invitation for you at any time. Okay. Yeah, I will absolutely. tell you, I felt so, um, blessed and energized after I went to that ranch, which I wasn't expecting. I just felt like, wow, you know, it's really nice to see when there's someone so dedicated. And I saw he as a leader is setting a bar that every, all the staff and everyone, it just, there was definitely a culture. Yeah. And it felt really good. That's that like, you know, that's definitely where we want James to end up. You know, and we've set it up so he can live there. When we find that place, he can live there for the rest of his life. You know, um, but um, yeah, I'd like to have like a, have people that care about him, have horses, have a pool. Oh, he'd love. Them. Wait, did he enjoy so. horses? He does. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I have another family where that is the thing that um, they mm -hmm. their loved one loves horses, and so I'm always yeah. about that. I'm always like calling, like yeah. They, they take the kids out, you know, and just, I think that's really important. Yeah. It's to figure yeah. out where they're going to have things there. And is James really into swimming? He is. He's really into swimming and he loves boats. So like, uh, like, oh. oh my gosh. Well, Rebecca and yeah. I just met someone last year. Rebecca, what was that? The, um, uh, Har Harbor Island. They take, um, mm -hmm. yes. Harbor Island has a program. Yeah. Um, yeah. Through Rotary, right? Oh really? Yeah, it I, it's called I think it's like challenging sailors or something like that. I'm Would gonna... James want to go out on a boat? Would your family want to go out on a sailboat? Because that's what it is. It's yeah. sailboat. Okay, he's never been on a sailboat, but he loves. I think he'd love any boat. Like we always we've rented the motor boats from Harbor Island. Um, but it's. I want. But yeah, like the sailboat would be great. We met. Did we meet the actual person that does it at Rotary in? Point Loma, Rebecca, was did we meet the actual person? Yeah, we have, yeah, we have this contact info. I think his name is Jim. It, he was part of the Rotary, but he does this as well. And he, or he's really involved in it somehow, but it's called Challenge Sailors San Diego. And it's a sailor. I've had people tell me they've seen it out there at Harbor Island, which is across from the airport. Like they have big, you know, they're, I think the sailboats have it on there. Um, that could be fun, Ted. You guys that would be, to try yeah, that. I think that'd be fabulous. Absolutely. And, and then we would, we'll absolutely volunteer our house for another, for a parent mentor night. If, you know, so we can have another one in person. Yeah. Yeah. That would be amazing. I love that idea. Yes. Yeah. So count, you know, count us in for the first one. And then maybe that's something like we can just rotate from, from house I to like, house to house. Do you know Brad Bentor, Ted? I don't. Because I know, I'm pretty sure Brad said him and his wife wanted to open their house up for a parent mentor event sometime too. 
Is that correct, Rebecca? I remember Brad saying something he wanted to do at his house. I think you're probably right, yeah. So yeah. perfect, yeah. Now we got two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Brad's a really good resource too, Ted. He knows a lot about what's going on in San Diego with respect to day programs and group homes. Oh, really? Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah. cool. And his son's also into horseback riding and I believe an intern at um, Terry's place mm -hmm. in Oceanside. Okay. Is that the, uh, is Terry's place the, um, is that like the, is that dogs or horses? Or I can't remember. It's horses. It's a rescue? It's oh, okay. A, it's a huge campus. It's like the Terry oh, okay. campus. They have this. Oh, no, place. now I remember. Yeah, that's a group home place. It's in yeah. San Marcos. Area. I, I actually have uh, always been wanting to go there. They have um, a cafe and I mean, they have so much going on there. They're building an event center. Um, mm -hmm. and I've always, I haven't been out there to see it and I know Brad's very involved. I'd love to go out when his, if his son's ever interning out there, it'd be extra fun to see him while he's out there working with the horses. That would, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, Lupe, is there anything you want to say to, um, before we end with Ted? Uh, I just really loved your presentation. Just like the way that Thanks, your stories is so, I don't know, it's so captivating. And it was kind of, I forgot what Rebecca mentioned, but just like you being like so personal and like telling your story, it's like, I appreciate it. Like I know other parents will appreciate that as well. Our last lunch on with Tracy, I think she had mentioned how she was trying to make it as happy as possible, but a parent commented like they also want to see like the bad sides, like especially with their need to diagnosis. So you know, not everything is like rainbows and sunshines, like there's bad days. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what this whole presentation kind of embodied. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't you. know, I can't express it with words. <laughs> I just okay. think autism tree is a place where we can just be our authentic selves and just be open and honest with wh wherever we're at in our journey. And um, I think it was meant to be, Ted, that you're surrounded by me, Rebecca, and Lupe, because like Rebecca said, how many families have you and Lupe taken in just this year? I think it's over 170 now. We had, I think, five come in last week. <laughs> and I, I think you're talking to the right group right here right now, because this is something we all know is extraordinarily important, and we haven't really had the opportunity to join arms and say, yeah, let's spend more time on this. And, and, and that's what I think we're doing right here with you, Ted, if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's more than a lunch yeah. you learn, Ted. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I do feel very well welcomed and loved and, and, and appreciated. And I'm, and I'm even more happy that I, that I put, you know, put together what I did. And thank you all for, for, ha for having this forum and for you know, being the, you know, the, the wholehearted, you know, loving audience that would, you know, make me comfortable telling it. Well, this is just a starting point, if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'd love okay. to commemorate this with a picture. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get Vanya up here with us too. Yes. Bonnie. Oh, were you, were you not on screen before, Bersky? <laughs> she was going in and out, but she's... Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't right. see her. Wait, I want to see her. Where are you? You gotta go to gallery, Dana. <laughs> now I can't see me. Okay, wait. I gotta wait. Give me one minute. I want to see everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the techie one, obviously, but I'm happy to see you. <laughs> we love you both. You guys too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Big smiles. One, two, three. Cheese. Perfect. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. Vanya, it's great, it's you, always great talking to y'all, but yeah, even better today. Vanya, I hope you know that um, this was honestly your, you know, Ted doing this um, lunch and learn. I hope you feel really proud as his wife. Um, I meet more dads now for the last 10 years than moms. It's just the honest truth. And I, I just, I really um, am happy to look at you and just say, I hope you're really proud of him, you know, like. So proud, so proud of you, honey. Yeah. I'm so grateful that you shared what you did. Oh, thank you.
Yeah. Well, I have the chills for me to you, you know, wife to wife, mother to mother, just, you know, <laughs> it takes, it's a rare thing for, you know, a dad and a husband um, to do that. And so I just feel blessed by this one. Yeah. And I'm glad you're here too, you know, cause I want to know you too. <laughs> He's a very loving, devoted, very dedicated, very caring dad. Really, really wants the best for James. Yeah, I know. Well, we need, you know, the truth is, I mean, we need this right now. Like we're, we're, we have, you know, we're double, triple the amount of families we've ever mm -hmm. taken in new families, let alone the thousands we have. So, I mean, I think there's no accident that this topic, and especially because we have so many um, teenagers, because we've been around 20 years, we have hundreds of teenagers. So mm -hmm. that are, you know, growing up. And so I just think this topic um, is so, so, so important. Mm -hmm. And um, I love to be on, I feel like we're a team right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you created mm -hmm. something today, Ted. Yeah. Thank you. I hope you're okay oh, with so that, Manya. You. I'm calling you, I'm putting you on this team. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh, you signed me up, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. You know, like like everything we honestly um, do at Autism Tree, I get, I found myself getting frustrated recently. I'm like. I just have to say it the way it is. I cannot tell someone how to help autism tree. I have that happen and I'll tell you, it shuts me down. I mean, and sometimes it's amazing people are like, Dina, I really want to come and volunteer. I really I like a retired person who's amazing. How can I help? How can I help? And I'll be like, I don't know. And I finally just said, okay, I've had zero success. Zero in 20 years with two things. One is I can't help people that are the primary caregiver, unless they're here. So, you know, have all these well-meaning people, aunts, neighbors, uncles, grandparents, whoever, but they're not the primary caregiver and they're, they wanna help the family. I'm and no success in 20 years. And then the other is like, well, honestly, I've had no success when someone keeps asking me, how can they help? <laughs> what 100% what works is when someone comes and they open up a door that's important and they're they're starting to walk through it and then we we say okay my god this is so important and we just figure out how to work together and that's how programs start right. and that's how we do vicky barbalak the last time she did a comedy show fundraiser for us was in 2015 she has a grandson with autism um who's you know a, a teenager now and so um you know she just called it out to me and rebecca when she wanted to do it and you know what it was three days after our 20 year, which was really hard. And so it made it really difficult to like have it standing room only and sell out when we already got San Diegans out on a rainy day. But I'm being really detailed is just that yeah. I love it when things happen organically and we can say, this is so important. And however we can move forward to be part of um, this trajectory that Ted's going on, we, we will do whatever we can to harness the resources and, and what we have built in 20 years, whatever can help it help in any way. Um, that is what we've always tried to do at Autism Tree. So I, I just can't stress enough how much I really consider this a blessing because organically I've been getting asked more and more each year to go and meet with people that are involved in running a day program or running something that's more along adults. Um, yeah. yeah, and I'm getting in my personal life with friends that I'm close to, I'm seeing firsthand and there's some people that, you know, you could talk to one of them is my dear friend in Point Loma and she's gone through, um, so much. Her son is verbal and he does have skills and he does drive, but you know what, having him be on his own, you know, mm -hmm. she had him away at college that didn't work. And it was a lot of medical issues and it was very scary. And just, um, uh, two of our kids actually were away at college and now it didn't work out. And those are families that put a lot into it. So that's what I mean about the autism spectrum. Yeah. It's so complicated, right? And so um, this, this, this issue of kids getting older on the autism spectrum is one that um, we have been embracing, but I think it's becoming each year more and more and more and more important because of the volume of families that are going through it right here at Autism Tree. I'd definitely yeah. like to be part of that. And I won't ask you what I should do. I'll just figure out something. Thank you. <laughs> because it brings out the worst in me. Some days I'm like, I cannot tell anyone what to do. <laughs> I'm just going to focus on what, <laughs> what 
what we need to do right here at Autism Tree that's like on a deadline. <laughs> We're just going to keep doing our work. <laughs> yeah, and give me grace today. I swear this was, I think this was my first lunch in there in this year because we took so much focus to mm -hmm. um, yeah. do the 20 year and the, and the comedy store fundraiser and, and just all the other stuff we're doing but so I apologize but you know I I really do feel like um this is something organic is happening far beyond a lunch and learn mm -hmm. yeah definitely <laughs> well thank you both okay. for being generous with your time I know you're taking time out of your work days to be with us and we went a little bit over <laughs> see did you already take a picture Rebecca we're yeah, good. I said it too. <laughs> We're good. Love, love you, you both. All. Okay. Love you. Love you all. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.